Your most precious Heavenly Father, truly you have blessed us beyond measure. And we come for the power in the name of the Lord. We come for the faith. You have to help us in all areas, Lord, because we have no strength of our own. We recognize that all our strength comes from you. And we pray for everyone here today, Lord, that you give healing power, that you give them hope, and take all the anxieties away from them, and let them know that all things work for the good of them, who are called according to your purpose. And you call us here today, Lord. It is your calling that we come and that we hear, and we just praise you for that. And we ask, Lord, you just continue to be with us, be with those that are not here, Lord, just help them to know and come to a saving knowledge and let him come back. For we ask all these blessings in Jesus' holy name and for his sake. Amen. <coughs> Today we're in Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Happy days are here now. You remember the program, Happy Days? You know, I was reminded when Joni passed away and you know, she had everything. She had beauty, talent, money, fame, fortune. But yet she led a terrible life. You know why? Because she was living off of beauty, talent, for, instead of living for God. And so if we want more happy days, we have to follow the Word of God. It will produce peace that will translate into happy days. Because when we're peaceful, have a peaceful mind, we're satisfied where we are, and the Bible teaches us, learn to be satisfied where we are, and keep on going from following God's Word. Well, we have some pictures in the fifth chapter of Ephesians to tell us how to follow God. The first one is about little children. You remember when they, if you had some little children, I think uh, Rob and them have some now, they hold your hand sometimes. And then it, as they get older, they don't want you to hold their hand. They want to be independent. Well, it's just like we are with God. When we have something terrible coming up, boy, we're praying and holding up hands and asking the Lord to come and be with us. Then when we get over it and we face something like it before, we say, I don't need to go to God with this. But He wants to hold our hand through all events of life. So we need to keep that in front of us. The second picture is of walking in love as Jesus did. When they nailed him to the cross, what did he say? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now when people are mean to us, remember just say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And I'm going to add a little bit on to that, even unto themselves. Because they're bringing wrath upon themselves. The third picture is one of submission. When Jesus submitted to his death on the cross, he suffered a terrible death. Yet he submitted to God's word and will. So we're going to learn about submission. So he tells us in the fifth chapter to walk as loving, obedient little children. Our speaking should be in psalms and praise and giving of thanks. Too many of the words are heard in the church and out in the world, but we as Christians need to be speaking in psalms and praise and thanks. Make the most of our time because yesterday's gone and today's half gone and everything that we've done will be exposed one day. And then happy hour, you know, they have those on TV and say, you know, come down here for happy hour. Well, happy hour should be spent in praise of the Lord instead of getting intoxicated. Why submit to your husbands? And this is a gift you can give to your husbands. So we don't need to try to work around it, ignore it, and all that stuff. We follow the Word of God. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. So husbands, you have a duty there. So we're going to look at walk as loving, obedient little children. Why and when would God want us to be as little children? When does He want us to be as little children? Always. All the time. Every hour of the day. And that's kind of hard for us to do because we're so learned to be independent, but we learn to be dependent on God. 
and the little children are a good example of how we to relate to God, how sweet do they hold our hand and walk trusting completely in us for all things? When our little children and grandchildren take them across the street, remember, have you ever done that before? Take their hand and walk across the street like that. And then as they got older now, Papa, I don't want you to hold my hand. I'm a big boy. I'm a big girl. Okay. So that's the way we are with God. God, I don't know if we really need you in this situation or not. So I don't know, but I should pray and should ask Him to hold our hand because He wants to hold our hand in all situations in all of life. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct thy paths. Pray without ceasing. Well, how should we walk? We should walk in love. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given Himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for sweet smell and savor. So when we're walking correctly, we're a sweet smell and savor to God. And he bottles these up and holds them and smells them as we walk through life. We can, what a blessing it is when I can walk in the power of God's love and know how, no matter how hateful people are, I can say, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. And I'm, sometimes I've been caught off guard, but I'm going to try to keep that in my mind. Somebody mean to me, I'll say, Lord, forgive them. They know not what they do. And forgive them. So we find that it's not them, Paul says, it's evil that lives within them. So when we follow his teachings, we're walking in love. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep my commandments. <clears throat> How fresh it is when we, as his children, doing the things he asks of us with a happy heart. To God it is as we see now a sweet smelling fragrance that envelops the whole room. <clears throat> When's a good time to tell a dirty joke? <clears throat> Never. <clears throat> and he says that fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, <clears throat> excuse me, let it not be once named among you as become a saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking or jesting which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. You know, you're sitting at a table with a bunch of people, and oh, that won't hurt nothing with it. We just, I'm going to tell this joke, but preacher, you can't listen. You don't need to listen to this one. All right. We're adults. Let's have a little fun. What does God's Word say? Let it not come from our lips. If we must talk, give God the glory and give Him the thanks. Will this ugly talk get us closer to heaven? No. He says, For this you know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an adulterer, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. This is not the way to heaven. What is the, what is the way to heaven? Through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. As our Savior, the <coughs> Lord. It must be through Jesus since we're preparing for our final home in heaven, and they don't do those things up there, why would we want to do them down here? When we do wrong, there are consequences. consequences. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. You know, I've heard people say, oh, nothing wrong with that. Well, how do we determine good from bad? We read the Bible. There's lots of false teaching going around. They deny what God says is sin, and they're smooth talkers. But God's wrath is coming upon these children of disobedience. But what can we do to keep from having God's wrath come upon us? We don't take part. He said, Be not ye there partakers with them. Do not be involved with the children of darkness, for we too will not escape the wrath. Do not do these. You know, there's peer pressure, even for adults. You know, I, when I worked in uh, the business world at RJR, we'd go out and 
uh, everybody to have their alcohol but me. And my boss says, why don't you just drink a little bit? I said, no, I'm not going to. And so, they, you know, we, we don't have to partake. But even then, everybody was looking at me like, well, you know, he's not going to drink anything. And I said, yep, you're right. We're not children of darkness, but we're children of light. For you were sometimes in darkness, he says, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. We're no longer ignorant, are we? You know, people say, you know, ignorant hillbillies. Well, we're not ignorant because we know the Bible. We have heard the Scriptures. We must study, meditate, pray for the Holy Spirit to use the Scriptures for our guidance. That is how we walk in the light. Well, how do we know we're producing fruit worthy of the kingdom? He tells us, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide us by the Scriptures, which is the truth. We will exhibit the fruits of salvation, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. We will show God through the power of prayer and guidance by the Holy Spirit that we understand His Word and are following it. The proof is in the... <coughs> Hoodie. What are we to do with the fruits of darkness? I'd say we stay away from them. Don't eat any of them. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. We actually have to speak out against the people who are doing that. We're supposed to help them find they're doing the wrong thing. And as gently as we can, tell the people they're living in darkness. Then show them the scriptures if they have any questions. You know, it doesn't matter what I think, what you think, what anybody thinks. It only matters what the scriptures say. Bad things done in secret are looked upon God as a sin. It's a sin whether they do it in secret or not. If it's a bad thing. Well, we've done evil in secret. We've done it sometimes off in the closet, off by ourselves. We've said something or done something in secret. Well, will it be forgotten? No, it's not going to be forgotten. It says, For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Even in secret, if we brought to light and it's still evil, if we've done things in secret, what do we have to do? Seek forgiveness. How do we know something is wrong? It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Check the Word. You know, a lot of people think that God's going to grade on a curve. <laughs> I've had a, heard a lot of people tell me, well, I'm better than that church person over there. So I must be going to heaven. I said, well, do you know Jesus Christ is your Savior? No. Well, you're not going to heaven. Well, how's he going to go to heaven? Because he knows Jesus Christ as his Savior. God's not going to grade on the curve. He says, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Whatever scripture reveals our sins is the light that shines in the darkness. Hey, do you know that some people are awake, asleep, and dead all at the same time. You seen any of those lately? They're awake, asleep, and dead all at the same time. Well, because the Bible tells us to wake up. Wake up, you dead people. He says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee life. Ignoring the scriptures is the same as we're asleep or dead. So get into the scriptures and get into the light. Do not waste another opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus. A word to the wise is... Starts with S, U, F, F, I, C, Sufficient. I. What? Sufficient. Sufficient. A word to the wise is Sufficient. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. A word of scripture to the wise is sufficient. And we need to know we have to redeem the time. 
redeeming the time because the days are evil. The Bible says work for the night, or the psalm says work for the night. It's coming. Coming when man work. won't have an opportunity to do anything good. Make good use of our time. Evil abounds. And we must refrain even from the look of evil. It says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Well, how can we know the will of the Lord? Read the Bible. Read the Scriptures. The Bible tells us how to get drunk. And it says here, And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. People do things not becoming of them when their minds are affected with strong drink. I worked at Wachovia some 40, 50, 60 years ago, however long it's been, and we had a boss man just as quiet as a church mouse. He wouldn't say nothing to nobody about anything. Wouldn't even speak to you. But when we go to those parties, he'd get his alcohol uh, filled, and he'd be dancing on the table, chasing the women. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what happens when you get a little of that in there. You change, you release all your inhibitions and the things you were afraid to do, you'll do right on. And happy hours should be praising the Lord, not drinking to forget. But listening to the Holy Spirit recite the blessings of this life and the future we have. What can lift up our spirits? You know, sometimes we come in church, I'm just dead, down, gone, all the way down. What can lift up our spirits? Praise the Lord. What? Praising the Lord. Yeah, praising the Lord, singing songs, and talking to the Lord about all of this. <clears throat> he says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Well, one of them that we should know is the 23rd Psalm. What does the first verse say? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. If I've got Jesus Christ in my heart and life, I don't need anything else. That's all I need in my life. And what's some of our favorite hymns? What's one of your favorite hymns? Okay. So go around singing that. Or singing, Jesus paid it all. And it was a life filled with aimless desperation. Without hope, walk the shell of a man. Once we begin to praise the Lord and sing and let the Spirit direct our thinking, we begin to give thanks to God. Hey, I feel better already, Lord. Thank you. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 says, And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now, Maynard G. Krebs, he had a word that he used that just, I mean, we'd use, and he'd just jump around. What was that word? Work. Work. He'd just jump up and down and go berserk. Well, now we're going to come to a word that just drives people berserk. And it's called submission. Oh, uh, I've been taught to be independent all my life. Now, I'm not going to be submitted to anybody, but the Bible says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. We must learn our role, practice our role, because it is for our own good. good. No one is over me. Treat others as the Bible requests using God's wisdom. Wives, so who do you submit to? Husband. husband. All right, it says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Well, let me tell you, that's a gift that the wife gives to the husband. Submission. The man can't demand it. He might get it, but she'll be his slave and not a submissive wife. And the wife will figure out a way to get rid of him sooner or later. But you need to be submissive to your husband. God expects the husband to be the spiritual leader in the house, using God's wisdom to guide the home. We try to water it down, we try to avoid it, but it is God's word. And we must do with God's word, but obey. Also, this is a blessing to the wife. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. 
This is not to be abused by men. Wives, help your husband this endeavor. Husband, use the wisdom that God has given the wives. If you have something going on, sit down and talk about it between each of you and come up with an agreement. And the only time that the husband has to be in charge is when he says, no, we're not going to do that. But most of the time you can talk it out with the wife and the husband and you don't have conflicts like that. <clears throat> How many things must the wife be subject to? Everything to the husband. It says everything. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Uh, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wife speak to their own husbands and everything. And again, husband and wife should sit down and discuss things. Uh, you know, don't, <clears throat> like my, uh, I had a friend of mine uh, used to go out and buy clothes. She'd hang them in the closet and then uh, maybe a week or two later, she'd get them out of the closet and the husband would say, where did you get that? She'd always oh, just been hanging in the closet. So you can find you can get all kinds of funny things going on if you're not careful. So this is God's word. Read it, believe it, follow it. What are the husbands to do? Love their own wives. Love their wives. It says, husbands, love your wives. These as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. A Christian marriage presents us the picture of Christ and his church that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might, print, might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. And so we find that the husband should thou on his wife lots of love. Well, how can we find out if men love themselves? By the way he loves his wife. By the way they love their wife. Okay. So are men to love their wives as their own bodies? He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord the church. How many times do you have a husband berate himself? You know, when he's berating his wife, He's berating himself. So keep that in mind because we're one. And if one hurts, the other hurts. Like your children when they hurt. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. We are joined with God through Jesus, so we're one with him. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Be not unequally yoked. It makes it so much easier if it's a Christian home where man and wife both are Christians. <clears throat> and this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Just as Jesus left his father to be with his church, so also does man leave his father and marriage an example how close we will be with Jesus. Nevertheless, let each, every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Don't wait until the other spouse comes around. Do our part right now. As husband, I must do my part. My wife may not come around. The wife has to do her part. The husband may not come around, but keep working and praying. Don't wait and see if the other one's going to do their part. A lot of people do that. They're afraid to give their husband obedience or give them love, you know, afraid that they'll take advantage of them. But we must each do our part and we will receive more than they can imagine in love and pleasure. So today we've talked about walking as loving, obedient little children. The thing we really need to do is to remember to take God with us in all that we do. Remember to pray without ceasing and all things to acknowledge Him in all thy ways and He will direct thy path. Are you looking for a different path? Are you looking for something new? Worried about anything? Take it to the Lord. Our speaking should be in psalms, praise, and giving of thanks. Walk around the house singing praises and to the Lord. Make the most of our time. 
because we only have so much. And happy hours should be spent in praising the Lord and not in some bar somewhere. And wives, submit to your husband. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. That's the love beyond measure that the husband should give to the wife. And as we come today, and you need to rededicate your life, looking for a church home, home, prayer, whatever it is that we call for. And I, um, like Avery, would you like to give us an update on your grandchild? Yeah, he's uh, doing real well. The, they closed the hole up in his spine. And, uh, you know, you talk about miracles and stuff and what the Lord does. His brain is shifted back to the front of his skull. And they are saying that he shouldn't have any barn or any other setback or something should be a <coughs> walking little walk. So, praise, praise the Lord. Lord. That started out in such tragedy, but the Lord has moved in the miracle of our prayers. And I want you to know <laughs> praise the Lord for that.